Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Hope and Anchor Community Church. We are so excited to have you with us today, and we hope that you are expectant and ready to receive what God has got planned for you. So let's kick this morning up with some worship. As I reflect, I find perspective here in the best and worst days of this life. You were always on my side. You're in the pain, you're in the promise, and on the days the furnace finds my face. You're the force within the place. And I don't need to know what the future says, cause if the past could talk, it'd tell me this. My God is if he did it before, he can do it again So I trust him with what comes next The God I know is known for faithfulness Whoa, 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 whoa And my hindsight says I can trust him with what's next Whoa, 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 whoa For the God I know is known for faithfulness There's more ahead than what's behind me And through the highs and lows and in between God, you go ahead of me And where he calls And where you call me, I will follow And if the water falls beneath my feet Yeah, you'll pull me from the deep finished yet if he did it before he can do it again so, so I'll trust him when the Lord comes in next cause my hindsight says I can count on this my God isn't finished yet if he did it before he can do it again so I'll trust him when the Lord comes next cause the God I know is known for faithfulness whoa, whoa. worship team for that amazing time of worship and now we're going to head over to Josiah and Natalia who are going to be sharing their testimonies of how God has been working in their life in this season. Hi my name is Natalia um, I've been a part of Hope and Anchor for three years now and I just wanted to share a short testimony from the Easter outreach that we had a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah I was talking to this one lady and her uh, two kids and I was just inviting them to church, inviting them to the barbecue that we were having the next day. And um, I asked her if there was anything that I could pray for her for. And um, we ended up talking for like an hour and a half and I was able to share so much of my testimony and pray for her and pray for her daughter and her other daughter. And um, she was just so encouraged and she was saying how she felt so at ease when I was praying and she felt like a release. So it was just really encouraging to see how um, God's power is still moving in the streets of Camden and all we have to do is be available and ready to be used by Him. 
Hey, my name's Josiah. Uh, I just wanted to talk about our Easter evangelism that we had a couple weeks ago. I was really encouraged. We uh, interacted with this one lady in some of the estates in Camden, and we were able to reconnect with her because actually a couple years ago, I wasn't actually here. She had met someone and gotten our Christmas gifts that we were giving out during uh, the Christmas season and we were able to reconnect with her as she was looking to reach out and we didn't give her that contact information a couple years ago so we we're able to bring her the emails and the phone numbers to reach out and get connected with our church as things start to open back up so it was really encouraging to be able to be a part of that story for her thank you so much for sharing your testimony with us as always, it's one of my favorite parts of the service, just to see the way that God's been moving and how he's been so faithful within our church family. Uh, so as we come to the time where we're gonna collect the tithes and the offerings, I just wanted to share a verse with you guys. Um, the verse I have for this week comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29. And it says, give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his presence. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. And what I love about this verse is how it's a reminder that as we give our tithes and our offerings, it's a way that we can worship God. It's not just about doing something because it's a good thing to do or just because we have to, but it's a way that we get to worship God. We get to bless Him. We get to say, hey, I recognize what you're doing in my life uh, and I wanna thank you for that. Um, yeah, and so as we give our tithes and our offerings today, let's do it with hearts that are thankful. You know, let's um, recognize that faithfulness that God has had with us and let's worship Him together as we do it. Um, so yeah, God, we just want to thank you so much for your faithfulness, God. We thank you for the way that you always provide for us. Uh, we thank you for the way that you meet every single need that we have, God. And as we give our tithes and our offerings to you, uh, we want to worship you, Father. We want to bless you, and we want to ask, Father, that you would multiply those gifts, that you would multiply those tithes and offerings, God. And uh, yeah, we want to see you use them um, throughout our nation. We want to see you use them throughout our city, God. And we're so thankful that we get to be part of what you're doing, God, and your move uh, in our city. Uh, so we just present these to you, God, and yeah, ask that you would bless them. In your name we pray. Amen. So there are several ways that you can give if you would like to. Uh, and one of those is through a bank transfer. Another one is through an app called Tidely, uh, super easy way to give. And then we also accept donations and tithes through PayPal as well. Uh, so if you'd like to give through PayPal, you can just send it to the email address admin at hopeandanchorchurch.org. We've seen what you can do, O oh God of wonders. Your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, you will do again. And there's no prison wall you can break through, no mountain you can move all oh, things are possible and there's no broken body you can raise no soul that you can save all oh, things are possible the darkest night you can light it up you can light it up Let hope arise, the death is overcome, you've already won, oh God of revival. Come on, you rose. You rose in victory, and now you're seated forever on the throne. What should my heart fear? What you defeated? Well, I will trust in you alone. There's no prison wall you can break through. No mountain you can move. Things are possible. And there's no broken body you can raise. No. So that you can save all things are possible. Hold the darkest night. You can light it up. You can light it up. Oh God of revival. Let hope arise. Death is overcome. You've already won. Oh God of revival 
revival Pour it out, pour it out Every stronghold will crumble I hear the chains hit the ground We got a revival Pour it out, pour it out Come awaken your people Come awaken the city Got a revival, pour it out, pour it out Every stronghold will crumble I hear the chains hit the ground Oh, got a revival, pour it out, pour it out Hold the darkest night You can light it up You can light it up God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Father, thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you because only you, you are the God of the impossible, Lord. Father, as we keep on worshiping you, Lord, and we open our hearts, Lord, for your word, Father, for what you want to do today, Father. As we keep on with what you are doing, Lord, Father, we declare that we need your presence, that we need your revelation, Lord, that if you are for us, nothing can be against us, Lord. Father, so in that position we take today, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Let's give a clap to Jesus there where you are. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. And welcome back. Also, we have a new setup. The people in the church have been working so strong, so fast, so diligently. I want to really thank everyone that has been putting, you know, blood and sweat into it this week to be able to kind of like keep us, you know, doing the best we can for the Lord that has, has given everything he can for us. So as we are, as we're going into this today, today we're going to come out of the vat under the title Pressing Steps. And if we think about it, life is just a sum of steps, right? I can see in my life and I can see in my kids' life, everything that we have decided, everything is just a sum of steps. And as, we, as we're going through life, we might have the tendency to speed them up or to actually ponder upon them so strongly, even, even more if they are being good ones, that we stay behind. But life is, is a course that has been set in front of us by God for us to walk on it. And in a position that we are today, we have no time to stay behind. I don't want to stay behind. I got to leave my yesterday's steps all along and by themselves on my yesterday. I cannot dwell in them so strongly that I forget that I have a task ahead. Today, we have to keep ourselves in the steps of today. More than ever, everything's going so fast. Technology, communications, relationships, everything is going so fast that we might be tempted to get frustrated, to deviate, to, to, get, to actually procrastinate because we might get entangled with the yesterday steps. But today I believe the Word of God actually brings us into alignment, really wants us to have that speed that He has set on the clock for us to have. He wants us to keep on the steps of today. Now deviate, don't, don't allow frustrations or anything actually to come in between us and those steps. If we, if we think about it, in my life, I don't know, it might be happens in you, but I have an eternal fight with GPS. With the GPSs, every time I go into the motorway or the highway, depends on the country where you're at, the way that you say it, I will have an eternal fight with them. If they tell me I'm going to have half an hour of a trip, I think I can make it in 25. 
And it's something internal. Maybe I'm a bit rebellious. Maybe, you know, you're super holy and so on. But I, have, I find myself every time having to put it because I need the directions, but I want to make it in a shorter amount of time. And sometimes because of that, I will deviate. I would actually do it my own way. And that takes me back. But in life, it's not like that. I won't allow frustrations like those, those frustrations of taking longer than I want to take me away from the steps that God wants for me to take. I don't know if, you, if you're in this, but I also don't want don't to wanna leave my inexperience in life to hold me back from taking the steps that God is asking me to take. But, but sometimes because I'm afraid I'm human, I might not take them because I don't think I got the experience enough to be able to live the steps that God is setting in front of me for me to take. And faith is like this. It's like a sum of steps. A moment, experiences that we have with our Lord in the moments that we trust Him. Another thing that has come in between me and steps that God has wanted me to take in life has been the lack of forgiveness. And in moments, God has had to stop me and to really rebuke me in this sense, correct me in that sense and say, hey, I wanted you to take these steps. And because you didn't want to take them the right way, I have to hold you back. Because I have ordered your steps, the Bible says. Today, we're going to go um, through the book of Philippians with Paul. I call it Uncle Paul out of love. We're going to spend eternity together. So, And Paul is trying to convey into this embryonic church in Philippi, what is it to be living under the circumstances and the afflictions that they have, but with the joy of the Lord. If we go, we actually see that he's trying to, to highlight into them that the way that they think and their thought life has everything to do with the way that they will live their faith out. The steps, the steps of a good man, the step of a good man. Before we go, we're going to go to Philippians 3, 12 in the NIV version. It says, not that I have already obtained this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take a hold of what which Christ Jesus took a hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and straining forward towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God, God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. As we switch now into Psalms, we're coming out of the back, out of the backs, literally, of King David. And this is not one of those psalms that, that he was writing towards the Lord. This is one of those, those psalms that he was really writing to us and to the, the faith-filled people that have believed in Christ later on in life. And, he, and he's used by God to really convey to us, to counsel us with his experiences. Psalm 37 verse 23 says the steps of a good man of a man are ordered by the Lord who takes delight in his journey and through he falls he will not be overwhelmed for the Lord is holding his hand that is in a BSB version I love this other version that says the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him that's the NIV another version would say in the New Living Translation all of them are so good the Lord directs the steps of the godly in the English standard version says the steps of a man are established by the Lord so they are their steps are, are affirmed by God they are directed by God and they're established by God the steps of a man are ordered by God thank you Lord for your word I see that the steps that God that God is giving us give us a sense a notion of process in life that everything is not all of a sudden I believe that in the in the in the Bible we have many 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 examples of men and women that actually live promises of God but in most of them they were preparing the steps for someone else to live in tell someone that you have next to you your faith is just not about you you might be preparing the steps for someone else also I see that when in these different versions uh, declares to us the types of steps that we can find it talks about a good man and we know that in the Bible in Mark it says that no one is good said Jesus no one is good under the sun only God is good when someone call him good teacher but what does it mean good in that context in the context that we're reading now in the Psalms it meant a mature man when we mature in our faith when we mature in the steps that God has for us it declares the Bible that He orders 
our steps. As we were maturing, God orders our step. We were not so tidy when we were young. Some of us might have grown and we're still not very tidy. Our steps are ordered by God. When we mature, our steps are ordered by God. Also, our steps are directed by God. It gives us direction. It gives us the wherewithal to follow the line thrown at us through His Word, through His heart, through the implications of what it means to obey Him in the daily. The steps of a good man are established by God. So it means that they take territory and a territory that pertains to God through that person. The steps of a good man are made firm by the Lord. Amen for that, Lord, because in the process, He orders us, He directs us, He establishes us, and He also makes us firm in the territory, in the obedience that He has given us to be able to live. The steps that He has ordered for us to obey give us the wherewithal to live the promise. Steps are there to prepare us for the blessing that God has for us. And blessings and steps have rhythm. The rhythms of God actually come in different ways. We know that in our finances, we need to experience the rhythm of God, the steps of God in our finances. More than ever, we are really very acquainted with that. In the lockdown, everything has changed rhythms. And it feels, it has a weird tendency to feel very slow, but very fast. We're almost midway into the year. Where has year gone? Where it has gone? I mean, we also can see that today we are faced with the situations that we have steps in, in the emotional. So many relationships are needing to be rebuilt. So many careers have to be rebuilt today because there are steps that we have to take. God is taking us in the steps that He wants. Even in ministry life, this is like that. When we go deeper into Philippians, it says that He, he pressed on to take a hold. Paul was trying to say, hey, I have to press. My steps have to be pressing steps. So I take a hold that of, of that, that which Christ took a hold of me for. It means that there's an interaction between my actions and the steps that God has ordered for us. They're not going to happen just because we have feet. Not just because we believe in God. We're able to live the fullness of the blessing and the purposes of God for our lives. We got to press. And so many of us, we have received with good, the good news with so much favor and happiness. But we have stopped pressing along in life. God is trying to convey with us today that He is asking us to have pressing steps forward. He wants us to leave the old behind. What about the steps that He had shared with you so long ago? Are you pressing? Is that press found in your character, in the way, the way that you live, in the way that you decide? Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself. Are we finding ourselves with that type of maturity that is humble? Say, hey, you know, I'm not ready yet to go. I still have other things to live. That thirst to be able to live what God has prepared, but also with the humility of saying, hey, I need to put it all in order. I need to create in me the, the, the wherewithal to be able to follow Christ. It's not going to happen just because God is good. I have to press on brothers and sisters because I have been made mature God is maturing us our faith is maturing and Paul was trying to say hey the way you think has everything to do with the way that you live and the experience that you have with Christ and that's maturity he was leading Philippi the people in Philippi to mature in the faith in the faith in the way that they were seeing things in the way that God was trying to make it clear for them in what way he wanted to use them later on and even till today through that letter they're blessing our lives through the same things that build them up the same steps that build them up are building us today that's the example of people of a, of a man Paul himself that actually had a notion of the process that we were in he knew that this would actually would be able to convey to convey to anyone else what the steps of God were good for and the way we needed to think to be able to grab a hold of them I want to grab a hold of the things that God has for me. God has given us models. And He has given us the way to see the people that are living like this. God is trying through this word. One of the things that He's trying at least is to really tell us, hey, if you see people pressing on in the steps that are taking in the daily, just make sure that you stay near. That you pay attention to what those people are looking. How they're deciding. How they're moving. How they're investing their time their finances, how they're invested in their relationships. Just take a look. 
pressing steps are there for us to be taken in. But it depends on us to have an attitude of pressing in and pressing on. Because if no, it continues to say later on in that chapter that the ones that were not pressing in ended up being so in love and entangled with earthly things in their mind that they became as enemies of the cross of Christ. When God directs us to, and in this, in this season and now in these times, God is asking us to press in. It's because he doesn't want us to get entangled in the worries of today. He doesn't want us to get entangled in the things that everyone else are lo- is looking at. He wants us to get entangled with his steps. The steps of today are essential. And just, just because we should not stay in love with those steps. Some of us have stayed with really good steps in the back, in the back of our, our mind, like the most precious moments of our life. And we keep reminding God about those steps. But God's saying, although they're essential, and they are, the steps of today are essential, we are not called to stay on them. They are temporary circumstances. The steps of God are ordered. And we will have temporary circumstances in the midst of those steps. That's why we don't take permanent decisions based on synchrostatial things and moments in this, in the midst of the steps that we're having. We have to keep on walking. God is asking us to keep on walking, to press in. I press. And as I press, God is going to have a way. He always has a way to align my steps to get to that expected end. He is not a God that will fault me. That he will, he will not deliver me from the things that I'm living. He's there to take me all the way to the expected end. That he has shared with me. That he has shared in my heart of hearts. But we live in tension. But although if we live in tension, we got to press on. We press in. And although we are in tension between the last steps that we took and the steps that are ahead. Like maybe like Abraham in the Bible. We have to press on. Maybe we are in tension between the things that we see inside of us. The things that God has shared with His Spirit. Maybe with the things that He has shared deep, deep, deep inside in our hearts. In those moments that we have been pouring our hearts in His presence while we've been praying. While we've been sharing the dreams and the fears that we have. While we've been sharing about our failure and the things that we long for. God is there. And he's asking us to press in and to press on, even though we are in between of these tensions. The tension between what I see inside and the tension that what I see outside. I would think about David in that. He was prayed in. He was, he was, he was anointed king. But it took him years to see what he was looking at inside manifest outside. Abraham, if we go into the Bible, also had the same experience. He was, he was given by God a word that he will be a blessing for all. That he was going to multiply. He was going to have, you know, kids. And he was going to be able to bear generations. It took over 25 years. Do we have the wherewithal to keep on stepping forward and pressing in? Although the promises of God don't happen as soon, as quick as we think they should. Today, do we see that the steps that we're taking forward cannot cannot be stopped by frustration maybe you are struggling with frustration maybe you're struggling with frustration frustration actually speaks about expectations really maybe you had expectations about what God said and maybe you have been tempted to just jump like me in the, in the GPS in the motorway in the highway want to just jump steps and God has to take us and keep us in certain steps because we have not lived them in a way that clarify for us the character of God that don't allow us to mature. God is not going to allow us to lose anything of His plans. He's going to ask us, to, even though we might get frustrated, don't be stopped. Don't be stopped by our frustrations. I have seen that the higher, the higher my expectation, the higher have been my frustrations. But the Lord is with me, even though I may fall, David said. God will hold us by the hand. And that's the promise of God. What areas in my life are frustrated by the steps I'm in? Or maybe the steps I thought I would be further on in and I am not. What are my frustrations? Because that will lead me in the kind of faith that I'm living. In the way that I'm perceiving. The way that I'm I'm experimenting. the, The life with God that He has given us. God has called us to let go of yesterday's steps. And today He's remembering us to grab and to grab and take a hold of today with focus. He's, he's reminding us through the word to really actually navigate into what he wants for us. 
and not stay behind. Genesis 12, 1 says, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, from your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. Then 25 years later, he found. He found the promise after the calling. After time happened. He said, I will make you great into a great nation and I will bless you. And I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. The process. Just leave your country and your kindred. The people that you love. The country that saw you being born. The people that you are familiar with. Just leave your father's household, mate. And I will make you a blessing. I will make you a great nation. But you got to leave those behind. We got to live yesterday's steps so we're able to live today. Let's not live out of the glories of what we have done with God or for God, what we have lived with Him, the shivers and the sensations, the things that He has spoken to our hearts of yesterday. He has so much more. He has so much more for us to be able to live, to perceive His character in a better way. God goes with us along the way. God is a God that walks with us. He walked with Abram. He, he said, I will show you the land that I have given you. Today, God says, the steps of today have to be taken so I can, you can perceive me walking with you, that I accompany you. All the stability that we have in our character, in our human experience, in our conduct, comes from the Lord that we serve. Tell me your conduct, and I'll tell you the Lord you live with, the one that is accompanying you along the way. Every good guidance comes from God. And that gives us the step of being owned, owned by God. We are property of heaven. We are property of heaven. We're not owners of heaven. We are property of heaven. Having the right perspective of the, t- the steps of today. Abraham had to see like that. To be able to escape the dilemma that many of us today might be experiencing in our faith. We might be intoxicated with the dilemma of process. We might want it now and the feeling of now is just releasing dopamine in the daily, in the minute. We want to know how our emails are going in the now we will have it. We want to know how our investments are going in the now we will have it. We want to know if we've been liked or we have anyone has given a thumbs up on anything I put in. It's in the now that we want it. We want to know how many people have seen the videos, how many people have given like to my pictures. I want to know if my mom wrote me today. I want it now. Because we have been addicted, intoxicated by the feeling of the now. And in our faith, we cannot succumb to that temptation. We have to let it mature. We have to wait for the times of God. Abraham was directed to go. To leave it behind, the steps of yesterday. So he can actually reach the promise. It was not next day. And maybe you're finding today that you're in the middle of steps. In the middle of steps of a marriage. Or maybe in the middle of steps of of a relationship that is not going as you want it. Maybe you're in the middle of steps in your finances, in relationships, in your career, as we said earlier. Maybe you are in the middle of the steps with your kids. They're not behaving the way you thought they would. But the Lord invites us today to walk in the steps that He has ordered. That He has ordered for us. The steps of a good man are ordered, directed, established, and made firm by God. Those are the steps of God for each one of us. This is what God is wanting us to actually pay attention today, in the daily, in our prayer life, in everything we're doing, everything we're part of. Anyone that forms part of our day has to understand that that person is just walking on steps that are firm and they're established. I know they're not perfect. I know we're not perfect, but the people around us has to have us as a reference As Paul was saying, look around for the people that are living in such a way. Pay attention. We want to be also those examples for the people that are coming to the faith. God is wanting to use us to set a standard on the way people walk. And God knows we will fall, but His right hand will pick us up. And that's His promise. If we take the light in His steps, in His steps for our life, He will be the one that will lead us in each one of them. The last scripture that we have for today is 1 Samuel 2.9. And this is a cross-reference from that word in, in Psalms where David was actually explaining what a good thing is to be in the steps of the Lord. And he says in 1 Samuel 2.9, he says, He guards the steps 
of his faithful ones, but the wicked perish in darkness. He guards the steps, but the wicked perish in darkness. They are lost. For by his own strength, his own strength, shall no man prevail. The Lord has to guard our steps as well. We don't only need direction or being established. We don't need only our steps to be made firm. We need the Lord to guard, to guard our steps. So many things are thrown at us. And you know what? That doesn't make us a victim. You know what? That gives us an opportunity to see God real in the daily, in the details, in the most minute and the biggest thing of our lives. In everything, God will guard our steps if we are faithful. He says, He guards the step of His faithful ones. I want to be faithful. I want to be counted as a faithful person. I pray for you that you're counted as a faithful person. And as we close, the Lord has wanted us to actually take steps that are pressing, pressing steps. He has led us to understand that He he will make them firm. Those pressing steps as we take them, He will actually establish them. He will direct them. So we don't have to have fears like the world has. Our fear just comes to actually give us reference. A reference of the position that we have in the kingdom. The fear of God actually comes and actually establishes us. He said, if you have taking, if you are taking pressing steps, I will guard your steps and I will order them. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to convey to all of us that today as we are, are we taking these steps forward, as we pressing on, as we taking these pressing steps, the Lord wants to bless us and He uses us as a blessing. For us to be able to carry that mantle, that anointing, that favor that people are really needing in the streets to take a hold of the promise for their lives as well. So we're going to press in and we're going to press. We're going to take pressing steps why and when because God wants us to reach the goal for which He has taken a hold of us. He wants us to reach the goal so we press. We're taking precious steps. Abraham meant by taking those steps, he meant that he saw the promise. In the life of Paul, by him actually writing these letters and taking these, these steps that were pressing, he meant that he would just not only made history, but he would just, just make a route for all of us to follow, to have him as a model and to even become models of others in the faith even in the midst of our weakness. And today, God wants to remind us that. Even if you don't have it all together, God wants to start using you. That's the promise over your life. And as we go into worship now, remember David, that as he took those steps, as he understood that his steps were ordered by God and made firm and established, he was able to share the experiences that this would lead to have. So today, if you you're finding yourself that you have stopped in the midst of the steps if you have found yourself that maybe you have not gone all the way you have stopped at some point the Lord is trying to convey with you that you can come back you can come back into the course that he's directed you for because he wants to establish you he wants to make your steps firm if you have never made a decision for Jesus and today this is this is something that you are longing for there's something in you that is calling it out the Lord wants to invite you to let him in if you want to do so you can repeat after me simple words like this Jesus I confess to my sin mate oh Lord of my life come to be my only Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus I pray amen if you pray that prayer I know that your your life is going to have a dramatic change it's not that you're not going to have difficulties on the steps or in between but the Lord is there to guide you give you models around the road to be able to convey with you the peace and the trust that he has for you the plans that he has for you, for you to be able to walk on those steps that he has ordered already for you so I pray in the name of Jesus that your courage Lord for my brothers and for my sisters Lord will come in such a way Father today that your anointing Father, that, that, that feeling of your presence will come in such a way, it will mark them, Lord. So, Father, they will understand that you are for them and not against them, Lord. 
that your favor is upon them for them to be able to follow the route and be able to get there to the expected end that they're longing for Lord. in the name of Jesus Lord. in the name of Jesus Lord. in Jesus name we bless you let's go back to worship before I spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me
Yes, guys, thank you so much for joining us. As always, it's been an amazing service. It's been really, really awesome, and we feel really blessed to have you join us. Uh, but don't forget, there's so much going on throughout the week. There's Hope Kids that starts this afternoon, which you, we know you guys enjoy. It's a lot. It's really a lot of fun. So check in for that. Um, not only that, but there's connect groups. So if you'd like to get plugged in, reach out to us, and we can plug you straight in, and we can meet up and talk, because it's legal now. It's amazing. It's really good. Uh, and yeah, it'll be an amazing time. Don't forget though, there's also the podcast, which is the Anchor of the Week, which talks about a lot of amazing stuff and how God moves and so on and so forth. So please check that out. And if you'd like to hear the preaching from today's service, you can do so by checking out Hope and Anchor Community Church on all podcast platforms. And the last thing and the most important thing, if you have a testimony that you'd like to share with us about how God's been moving in your life, please reach out to us. We would love to talk to you about it and we'd love to include it so people can be blessed by it as well. So thank you so much for joining us. And as always, it's been amazing to see you. We'll see you next time. Bye guys.